Let's talk about the Leica Q3, the camera for Sony photographers who've made it. <laughs> I'm saying that jokingly, but in reality, like every video that I've watched about the Leica Q3 as I was waiting to get mine, because it took quite a while for me to get mine, it was Sony photographers talking about the Leica and the fact that they shoot with their Sonys and they love their Sonys, but they wanted the Leica because Leica, and they gave their different reasons. Where I desired this camera came out of wanting something different. I've been shooting on Sony since the A7S came out, and before that I was shooting on DSLR Canon for many years before that. Sony, while being an amazing camera manufacturer that produces cameras that allow me to get my job done effectively and efficiently, the Sony cameras are maybe just a little bit boring these days. The cameras are no longer really exciting every time a new version comes out. Yes, there might be a new feature that's kind of neat, and it helps with whatever we're trying to accomplish. But as far as a camera goes, it's not super exciting. It's kind of like the iPhone. The iPhone is probably about as good as it's going to get. It's amazing and every year it gets a little bit better, but it's not exciting every year. It's really hard to get excited about a new iPhone anymore. But Leica, on the other hand, is a camera manufacturer that has continued to be able to produce that excitement year after year, and they've been around for a long time. And so when somebody gets to their the point in their photography journey that they want something different in hopes that it will invigorate that spark of photography that we once had back when we first got started, Leica is a likely direction for most photographers to go. And most photographers that I've seen online that have recently jumped into Leica, whether it's a Q3 or maybe another camera from Leica in the last couple of years, it seems like that is their unspoken story. They are looking to reignite the spark of photography that they once had. And I'll be honest, that is why I decided to purchase the Q3. The Q3 is an absolutely fantastic camera, but is expensive. And when I think about spending $6,000 on a camera body, I think about how much utility is that going to provide for me. I'm thinking about my Sony A1 and what that camera needs to be able to accomplish for me. And this camera does not check hardly any of those boxes. So why would anybody in their right mind go and purchase a camera like this? Let's actually unbox this. And if you wanna skip through the unboxing, you can use the timestamps down below, but uh, let's unbox it and then we'll jump back into my thoughts. Now it comes in this uh, discreet box here. And as we slide the camera out here, we've got the Leica Q. Three. Now, why am I so excited about this camera? Well, this is the first camera that I have purchased that is not a Sony in a very long time. And while I love my Sony cameras, I want something that I can just truly enjoy as a photographer for the hobby of photography. And that's what this camera is going to be for me. So we are going to unbox this together because I know I've been waiting for this for a very long time and perhaps some of you may have been waiting or considering this camera. I wanted to just share this experience with you as I enjoy the unboxing experience of the Q3. So we've got the outer shell of the box here which I'm going to try not to destroy. All right, the Leica Q3 in its beautiful packaging. Let's open this up and see what we've got. What we have is some trays here or some drawers and we also have a box up top so let's go ahead and start with the box up top that is going to slide out like so the leica body and lens i am sure is in here there it is oh my goodness i have been waiting for this for so long and i've considered canceling this order never before i think have i purchased anything this expensive and it not kind of been an impulse buy. I'll be honest with you guys. This did start out as an impulse buy because I wanted something different. I wanted to get back the love and enjoyment that I have for photography that I have had in the past. And I have bought lenses and tried different things for my Sony cameras to get that back. I haven't been able to get that. I've purchased manual lenses for my Sony A1 and tried them on other Sony cameras, just trying to find something that would bring back a little bit of enjoyment 
for photography where I felt more connected to my equipment. So here is the top drawer. We're gonna go ahead and open this up. We've got a serial number that I'm just gonna go ahead and block here. And we've got our paperwork that it comes with. And we've got additional documentation in here as well. Free membership invitation. Looks like that is membership to Leica Society International. All right, so we'll have to check that out and see what that's all about. So yeah, top drawer is paperwork and information. Pretty cool. The bottom drawer, which is larger than the top drawer, this one looks to have cabling and all of that good stuff in there. So what we have here is our Leica USB-C to lightning accessory cable, which is something I'm definitely not going to need any more because the iPhone 15 is USB-C. And so this camera connects to your device. And I've seen other people demo this, but I'm not going to need the accessory cable anymore. So it would be nice to have, and I'm, I'm hoping that in here somewhere, is a nice Leica USB-C to USB-C cable that I can utilize with my iPhone because we don't need that lightning cable. Looks like we have some sort of a filter ring. This can thread right onto the front and it's going to protect your filter threads. And so that uh, flush mounts really nicely. Here we have a Leica leather strap. So very nice black leather strap. I actually have a leather strap that I'm going to use with this camera. And so I'll put this back in the bag for storage. Let's move on to what I think is the battery. Everything nicely protected in these really soft pouches. And so, so we'll go ahead and pull the battery out of the packaging. Now moving on to this larger bag. Now I did also purchase the wireless charging adapter for the Leica Q3 and I have that. I'm gonna go ahead and try it and see if I like it. So here we have the battery charger. This is probably cabling for the battery charger. And so we would seat our battery right in like so, and then we can charge our Leica battery. Opening up the final storage bag, we have our cabling for our charger. So we've got two different cables in the box. One is international and one is for the US. So I'm gonna go ahead and seat the battery in here. Definitely different for me. Every camera I have ever owned has had a battery door. And on the Leica, we do not have a battery door. Our battery simply seats flush mount there, which is pretty cool. Now we have a slot for our SD card. So let's go ahead and put our SD card in the slot. Let's make sure it's inserted correctly. And boom, there it goes. So that is that. And we can just get the rest of our stuff back in the box here. I think for now, I'm just going to put the lens protector, the lens thread protector back in the box. And as far as the charger goes, I'm going to see what the battery life and, and my usage is on this and see whether or not I'm actually going to need to use the battery charger that came with the camera because my thoughts are with the wireless charging and being able to charge via USB-C, I should be able to keep the camera topped off relatively well without having to mess with that. So let's slide that back in and we're going to open up the wireless charging hand grip or hand griff. <laughs> so let's go ahead and open that up. And I have actually had this in my possession for months as I've been waiting for this camera. So what does that hand grip entail? Well, it is a base plate as well as additional grip for the camera. And so we would attach this to the bottom of the camera. Let's go ahead and pull out that so we can tighten it up. We'll go ahead and line everything up here and attach the base to the camera, which adds a little bit of weight to it. This camera has a decent heft to it. It feels solid. I mean, it is a solid camera. It's heavier. This feels like a lot of camera 
in the hand. I'm super excited to get outside and start shooting with this. So I have spent the last several weeks with this camera and I will admit initially I was super excited and my expectations were way too high. And when I went out and shot with this camera, I really wasn't enjoying it at the very beginning. Yes, it's a, a very nice camera. It's beautiful to look at. It is a piece of artwork. Gosh, I love what they've done with this camera. And it is so different than everything else. My Sony camera have become what I can expect every single time. It's nothing is really different and exciting. But this camera with its fixed lens, I put these promises on it that this camera was going to solve all of my problems. And that was not true. And that was frustrating for me. But I was able to overcome that by spending more time with the camera and reminding myself why I wanted this camera in the first place. Let me explain this a little bit. When you make a big purchase, you put expectations on that purchase. And if you don't go into it with the right mindset, you're going to end up being frustrated. And I've seen some other YouTubers out there make videos about the Q3 and they ended up frustrated. And I think they did the same thing that I did. They took this camera out and expected it to be as easy and fast and functional as our Sony cameras. And that's just not the case with this camera. I lead a pretty busy life. I run my own business. I have four kids. We have lots of things going on. And I've gotten used to being able to just grab a camera and take a picture really quick and have it turn out relatively well. Whether it be with my Sony camera or even my iPhone, I can grab a photo really quick and I know what to expect with those cameras. But with this Leica camera, it took a little bit more time to really think about how to use it. When in manual mode, which is predominantly where I shoot, manual mode is a bit different on this camera. If I want to adjust the aperture, I have to do that on the lens, which I'm just not used to doing. I'm used to doing that with toggles on the camera. And so that took a little bit of time and is still going to continue to take time for me to build that muscle memory. I'm also not used to adjusting the shutter speed by turning a positional dial on the top of the camera. I'm used to just rotating something and being able to zoom through shutter speeds as fast as I want. I'm also used to adjusting my ISO on the back of the camera, where now I have to press down this button and rotate this or go into the menu to do it, and it's just a little bit different. I've also gotten used to my camera remembering specific settings for photography and video. So when I switch between photo and video on the Q3, it's bringing the settings that I had across and I have to readjust. And so there's some frustrations there that I've experienced. And those robbed my initial joy from this camera. But then I stepped back and I thought to myself, you know, I can't just be this way about this Leica Q3. I need to give it a chance. I need to use it for what it is. Yes, it's a $6,000 camera and I have to get the idea out of my head that it's not going to provide the same utility to me that my Sony cameras will. And that's not why I bought it in the first place. So I have to get that out of my head and I have to revisit the fact that the reason that I purchased this camera was because Yes, it's a Leica and I've never owned one and I wanted to own a Leica, but it also has a fixed lens on it. And that fixed lens cannot be removed and switched out for any other lens. That means that I have to be more creative myself. I can't zoom in and out. I can't decide to go grab a telephoto lens and then snipe photos from a distance. I have to get up close and personal if I want to get a picture with this camera, or I have to be okay with being distant from whatever my subject or point of interest is. And that was why I bought the camera in the first place. And I think I forgot about that because I purchased this camera so long ago and it took so long for it to get in. And the anticipation just continued to build as more people got their cameras and put out videos. And I watched them wanting my camera to be in my hand so that I can start shooting with it. And so I blew the expectations completely out out of proportion for this camera. And honestly, I do that in life quite often. Unrealistic expectations can rob us of the joy of things in life. And I definitely allowed that to happen with a Leica Q3. So let's talk about the actual camera. I'm not going to go into the specs because there's hundreds of videos out there that talk about specs. And if you're buying a camera, if you're considering this camera, the specs are something that you're not really going to need to pay attention to because they don't matter. What matters about the Q3 is why you would purchase something like this in the first place. 
place. So the first thing I did when I got the camera is just went outside and started shooting photos of what was around and in my yard because I needed to experience this camera. It was going to solve all my problems, right? So I got out in the front yard and started shooting photos. And my initial frustrations were just navigating the camera and there being a lack of buttons compared to what I'm used to on other cameras. Just getting around the camera was a little bit frustrating. But as I started using it more, that started becoming easier and easier and understanding how the Leica system works and all of these different switches and stuff on the camera to figure out how I can get my settings and get my photos that I wanted to get. So the next place I took this camera was to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho for a weekend away with my wife. And the frustration with this camera continued because the expectations I was putting on it were still there. And I still didn't have that muscle memory with the camera and hadn't used it enough to really understand and be able to just grab the camera and not be thinking so much about the camera, but thinking about what I want to capture. And so the frustration continued there, so much so that when I got back from that weekend, I actually had decided that I was going to return my Leica Q3. I even went as far as getting the return authorization from B&H Photo. I was ready to send it back. But I decided to give the camera a couple of extra days and get out of my way. I realized that the expectations that I put on this camera were unrealistic and that this camera itself wasn't going to solve my problems. It's the way that I've been approaching photography lately. I spend so much time time as a professional photographer shooting for other people, needing to get in with a certain amount of time because I have an hour and I need to get the job done and I don't want to be there all day. And then also in my personal life, I'm taking photos of things that are happening, whether it's one of my kids sporting events or a birthday party or something like that. And I'm not allowing myself just relax and think about what's going on around me and think about how I want to capture that. This is not a camera that you're going to grab and go out and just high speed shoot with. That's not what it's designed for. If you want that, then you're better off with a Sony and you're going to save a ton of money by going with Sony. Sony is designed to be fast and reactive and so are the latest Canons and I would assume probably are the latest Nikons. Those cameras are meant to go out and just not be in your way. Like this camera does not get in my way. I capture what I want, when I want, how I want it, and I don't have any issues there. But I can't approach photography in the same way with the Leica Q3. This is a camera that is more of an experience, and using it requires understanding it and appreciating it for what it is. And it's obvious to me now that I was not in the right mindset for that at the beginning of my journey with my Leica Q3, which is not fair to the Q3, and could have robbed me from the joy of just experiencing photography as the art form that it is, which was why I decided to purchase this camera in the first place. So yes, the Leica Q3 is an absolutely fantastic camera. It's the best camera in this class of what would be considered a point and shoot type of camera because it has a fixed lens and it's not a DSLR. It's not a mirrorless. You can't change anything about this camera. There are some little frustrations that I have about the camera, such as where they decided to put the SD card slot uh, and being that you attach anything to the bottom of this camera and it covers up the SD card slot. And you might think, oh, well, that's OK. I'll just plug in via USB-C and transfer files that way. Well, you can't do that. This camera does not allow you, or at least with the current firmware, does not allow you to transfer files off of the camera over USB-C. You can charge the camera via USB-C. The battery life that I've gotten out of this camera is absolutely fantastic. And I actually did get the wireless charging hand grip slash base for this camera, but I decided not to use it because I need to take the SD card out of this camera in order to get my photos out of the camera. Now, sometimes I do connect the iPhone app to the camera and transfer photos that way, and then load photos into Adobe Lightroom that way. That is another way of getting photos out of this camera besides taking the SD card slot out. It just adds a lot of extra steps because you've got to copy the photo over to your iPhone and then you have to upload it into Lightroom. And there's a few extra steps that are involved there. But it's not the end of the world. I also have to look at it from the perspective of this is not a workhorse camera and I can't apply the same workflow that I would to my Sony's to the Leica either. I have to rethink how I'm going to take photos off of the camera and process them. And even when I put them into Lightroom, processing them the same way that I did with my Sony isn't going to work either. The presets that I've created and have been using and all of that stuff, they look good on the Leica image, but it takes away from the true Leica image that's being produced. So I have to rethink my editing as well. Now that I've understood and realized that 
this camera is doing more for me than making me take a step back, take a deep breath and relax before I shoot some photos. It's actually making me rethink my entire workflow. I don't mind that this camera is so different. I don't mind that it's making me think differently and making me readjust my expectations that have become so unrealistic because I've been shooting on amazing Sony cameras for so long. If I realign my expectations with reality, the Leica is gonna be able to do exactly what it does, which is produce amazing images with beautiful clarity and amazing color, images that I wanted to be able to capture for myself and is the true reason why I decided to buy the Q3 in the first place. So if you're considering purchasing the Q3, my closing advice to you is to align your expectations appropriately. This camera is not going to solve all of your problems and it could introduce a lot of frustration if you don't go about it correctly. I think there's a lot of people that are talking about how great Leica is because they just want to be part of the bandwagon of, oh, Leica, this Q3 is amazing and I absolutely love it. And I'd be surprised if they don't just return to their old Sony ways because if you approach photography the same way that you would with the Sony, you're not going to enjoy the Leica. And that's exactly why I need this camera and why my mindset has shifted so much in the last couple of days. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below. What are some things that you've allowed to get in the way of your true enjoyment of photography. Let's talk about that in the comments. I know this video definitely went in a different direction, definitely is a different video than I planned on creating a few days ago. But thanks for sticking all the way through. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you back in the next one.